All right, I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart and The Lonesome Crown, all published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Behind me, you can see Monticello, or Monticello, the house on the hill that Thomas Jefferson built, our third president. We're here to review the book, American Sphinx, by Joseph J. Ellis. The character of Thomas Jefferson. Let's take a look at the cover. The cover painting was done by, um, let's see, Charles William Peel. It, uh, you know, if you look at that painting, it looks like he's standing in a stiff breeze the way his wind is whipping, like a 10,000 mile an hour wind storm. Still better hair than Donald Trump. Anyway, let's review this book and talk a little bit about Monticello here. Um, place was built by enslaved people. It's one of the contradictions of Thomas Jefferson, the guy who wrote the Declaration of Independence. The one document on this planet that is um, all about freedom and free men and our right to live free and the contradiction of that in the fact that this guy, Jefferson, owned throughout his life over 600 slaves. He only ever freed seven of them, and those were his children that he had with... I think it was Sally Hemings? Yeah, Sally Hemings was the slave that he... Uh, we don't know if he fell in love with her. We don't know if they... We don't know the nature of their relationship at all, other than that... It was an imbalance of power. He was the master, she was the slave, and they had children. Um, you know, Thomas Jefferson is an interesting guy. He could, he could write the Declaration of Independence. He started either the Army or the Marines. I can't remember when the Barbary pirates were terrorizing the Mediterranean. He, I think it was the Navy he started to send over there to stop the pirates. He also, for $100,000, it was the Louisiana Purchase which expanded the West. Um, so many great legacies he left. Not only that, he was the main architect of religious freedom in our country. And, the, and him being an atheist, you know, it almost makes sense, though, that a non-believer would be the one that would... Uh, that would push for the religious freedom because, you know, the Catholics, the Protestants... They would all want their own religion to be the dominant religion to the exclusion of all others. And so it was it was up to a guy like Thomas Jefferson, a free thinker, a non-believer, to push for religious freedom in this country. So everything about this man's life was about freedom, yet he owned all these slaves. And that's kind of the theme of this book. The character of Thomas Jefferson, the American Sphinx. It's, uh, it's like, how do you... How do you categorize someone that changed the world with his words, but yet in his personal life almost lived an opposite life of, uh, you know, everything about this building, Monticello. If you, when you take the tour, you learn that every brick and every piece of wood and every nail was forged and built by slaves on this mountain. Down there on Mulberry Lane, which is down there, where all the slaves lived, and where all the blacksmith shops and gardens and, and farms and woolen mills, everything about this place was put together, was made here and built and put here. It's just amazing. Just an amazing place to visit and tour. And it's kind of just, you know, as one of the tour guides said, this place isn't about just Thomas Jefferson. This place is about the real human beings that built it uh, and the toil and hardship of their lives. And, uh, you know, we read this elegant book by Joseph J. Ellis that um, kind of puts into perspective, you know, this book combined with the tour puts into perspective, you know, how brutal and unfair colonial life really was for the people who lived it. You know, Thomas Jefferson was one of the 
back in the day. You know, we talk about the one percenters today. Thomas Jefferson was that back in the day. Even his slaves, the people he enslaved, the human beings he enslaved, lived in better quarters than just the average farmer that lived down off of the slopes of this hill. You know, the average Virginia farmer just lived in a tiny one log, one room log cabin house. And, 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 he, and the average Virginia farmer had no slaves to toil the fields, to clear the trees out, to move all the rocks. You know, the, the slaves actually lived better in a lot of ways. You know, aside from the fact that they weren't free, they were severely beaten. Um, gosh, what a what an interesting place to visit and just see a contradiction in in human nature where you can be a person like Thomas Jefferson who can accomplish so much. Travel to Europe, live in Europe, study in Europe. Like Ben Franklin, he spent a lot of his time in Europe. He was the French ambassador. I mean, he, he, he was friends with Lafayette. When Lafayette visited here in Monticello, they um, threw th two weeks worth of parties, cleared out the wine cellar for the guy. And Thomas Jefferson, he spent a lot of time in Europe learning sophisticated things. Um, even taking even taking his some of his slaves with him. Well, Sally Hemings went with him, and her brother went with him. Sally's brother, and uh, they learned how to um, cook like the French, how to treat their lords and ladies like French lords and ladies were treated. This is a bizarro. It's bizarre. It just like eye-openingly bizarre to come to this kind of a place and just see the contradictions in America. Well, the greatest country in the world was really built on the backs of, you know, enslaved human beings. And it's, it's, a, it's kind of a shame. It's the, the theme of this book. Well, we're talking about the book. It's the whole theme of this book is the contradiction in our founding fathers, you know, whereas George Washington was the brave military kind of hero of the uh, Revolutionary War. Thomas Jefferson was more of the thinker, more of the writer, more of the uh, intellectual. And uh, George Washington freed all his slaves. Thomas Jefferson was in debt and his slaves were sold to pay off the debt so he could keep this house. This is bizarre. Really crazy. Crazy. Anyway, this book, elegantly written, by the way. You know, I, I reviewed the uh, the uh, Joseph J. Ellis uh, biography of George Washington at Mount Vernon. So now we're reviewing the uh, Joseph J. Ellis biography of Thomas Jefferson here at Monticello. Or Monticello. I call it Monticello because there's a place in Utah named Monticello. It's just kind of the way it's going to be. Anyway, 10 out of 10 for this book. It was a great book, great place to visit. And uh, history, man, we got we to gotta, we gotta know it. We got to love it. We got to love researching it. We got to love reading about it. And we got to love visiting these places.